Hi everybody, it's Mallory Smythe with Endow. Yesterday was the feast day of Pope St. John Paul II, our, our patron saint here at Endow. And some people refer to him as John Paul the Great. And they do that because he is great. I mean, we all know the stories of his life, that he survived Nazi Poland, and that he helped bring an end to communism in Poland. We know how he fought for human rights on the world stage, and how he literally brought the gospel to the ends of the earth. In some way, I bet that all of us can attribute our love for God somewhere down the line to the effect of the life of this man. Yet what makes him truly great is that he achieved levels of holiness that are seemingly impossible. This was a man who was known for sneaking away for hours to pray in the Adoration Chapel. He was known for his uncanny ability to forgive. He was known for his ability to be able to pick out of a crowd of the masses that one person who needed to hear the gospel that day. See, I submit to you that what made this man so great was the suffering and the trials of his life. The fact that he was a man of suffering his entire life. And yet, as those sufferings came, he was able to accept them in a way that allowed him to enter into the redemption of Jesus Christ. As I read through the stories of all these women, men and women through history who have become great and who have left legacies, they all have suffering in common. And they all have found a meaning in that suffering, which helps to make them great. See, and during his pontificate, Pope St. John Paul II wrote an entire encyclical uh, examining the meaning of suffering from the Christian perspective called Salvivici Dolores. And in it, he says this, even though the victory over sin and death achieved by Christ in his cross and resurrection does not abolish temporal suffering from human life, nor free from suffering the whole historical dimension of human existence, it nevertheless throws a new light upon this dimension, upon every suffering, the light of salvation. Because Jesus came, died, and rose again, he has revealed the meaning of everything, including our trials and our sufferings. And so we no longer suffer just for the sake of suffering. We suffer for something more in the same way that Jesus did. We suffer for the glory of God. Now, ladies, over the past couple weeks, uh, we have received just a ton of prayer requests where you have revealed to us the depths of the heart of your trials. And they have brought me to my knees. Because what I realize is that when I go to Starbucks or when I'm walking through Target or when I'm going about my daily life and I see all of these women who are beautiful and put together and polished, there's something going on beneath there. There's something that they're going through. And I've been praying and asking God how I can become the kind of friend who helps the women in my life turn their sufferings into greatness and helps to find the meaning in them, those sufferings instead of just trying to get rid of them or complain about them. As women who know Jesus Christ, we can follow in the footsteps of Pope St. John Paul II and bring about that meaning of suffering so that we can truly become a generation of greatness. If you want to learn more about the Christian meaning of suffering, you can dive in to our endowed study on Salvivici Dolores or any of our other endowed studies at www.endowgroups.org or you can connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at endowgroups. Have a great day.